The Sin of Jeroboam. Jeroboam ruled the ten tribes in northern Israel. Rehoboam was king over the tribe of Judah and part of Benjamin. They lived in Jerusalem and southern Israel. All of Israel, both north and south, worshipped in Jerusalem. My people still sacrifice in Jerusalem, Jeroboam said. They may turn back to Rehoboam and kill me. He decided to make two calves of gold. Here are your gods, he said to Israel. They rescued you from Egypt. Jeroboam set up one calf on an altar in Bethel. The other he put in Dan. He caused God's people to worship idols. This has been called the sin of Jeroboam ever since. Jeroboam was at Bethel worshiping the false god. That day, a prophet came from Judah. He cried out, O oh, altar, altar, the Lord says this, A man will come from David's family named Josiah. O oh, altar, he will burn the priests who worship here. Here is the proof. The altar will break down. Its ashes will spill out. In anger, Jeroboam tried to grab the prophet. He reached out. Instantly, his hand shriveled up. Just then, the altar broke apart and its ashes spilled out. <clears throat> okay, so here we go again with the Israelites. Once again, choosing to worship false gods. It's like some people just never learn, you know? You get frustrated <laughs> with the Israelites in history here, uh, repeating this same pattern over and over and over again, but then you realize that, well, you got to cut them a little slack because we ourselves are guilty of repeating the same bad behaviors over and over and over again as well. We have a tendency to not learn from our mistakes, so we can't just, you know, sit in judgment upon them or anything. Oh, but bless, you'd think they would have learned, but no, apparently not. <clears throat> and while we can't sit in judgment upon them, the Lord certainly can. And so he's not happy at all with his people again. He probably gets tired of not being happy with his people. Back then, the Israelites were his people. Now, Christians are his people. Yeah, and I'm sure he's not happy with us. As I know he's not happy with me many, many times. But, oh my gosh, the Israelites and these false gods. I tell you what, it's just a, a pattern. <laughs> so, here we are. Um, when Solomon had been king... Solomon had married women from other countries, which then, of course, equated to also being women of other religions. And he had built um, altars in Jerusalem for them to worship their false idols. And he himself began to worship their false idols as well causing the Lord to tell him that he would rip the kingdom from his son's hand and that his son would no longer reign over all of Israel the way Solomon had been allowed to do. And so sure enough, after Solomon's death, his son uh, Rehoboam was a um, king, but he was a weak king. He, he was not um, a strong leader the way a king should be. And so a man named Jeroboam ends up leading a lot of the people and kind of taking over the role that Rehoboam should have been doing. Um, and Solomon had also been a very harsh king. He overworked the people. He overtaxed the people. And the people did not like Solomon for that. And so they had gone to Rehoboam with Jeroboam representing them. 
and asked that Rehoboam would be more lenient to them and not be the harsh taskmaster that Solomon had been, uh, Rehoboam ends up deciding to go the exact opposite direction of that and become even rougher on the people uh, than what Solomon had been, to tax them even more, to overwork them even more, which caused the Israelites to rebel against Rehoboam and declare Jeroboam to be their king. Not all of Israel, but 10 out of the 12 tribes. So, Jeroboam is now ruling the 10 tribes that lived in northern Israel, and Rehoboam was over the tribe of Judah and part of the tribe of J uh, Benjamin in Jerusalem and southern Israel. Uh, I'm not sure about the other part of the tribe of Benjamin, if, if Jeroboam was actually over ten and a half tribes, while Rehoboam was over one and a half tribes, or if Jeroboam was over ten and Rehoboam was over one and a half and the other half of Benjamin were just kind of doing their own thing. I'm not sure. The Bible may explain it, but this particular Bible story here does not. Um, so anyway, that's where you have it now. Jeroboam is ruling the ten tribes in the north. Rehoboam is ruling a tribe and a half in the south. But everybody is still worshiping in Jerusalem. That's where their temple is. And so Jeroboam gets worried about that. He's like, if my people are still traveling to Jerusalem, which was more towards the south, to make their sacrifices, they may end up, while they're there, deciding, well, yeah, Rehoboam was really the king. Maybe we should go back to um, following after him and letting him be our king. And then Jeroboam's afraid they're going to kill, you know, that they would get in, in their minds to kill him um, if they decided to go back to following Rehoboam. So, for reasons I will never understand, his solution to that problem is to make two calves of gold. Back with the calves again. They tried that once before too. I'm not sure why that's their animal of choice, <laughs> but apparently it is. Makes two calves of gold and tells them, here's your gods. These are these two gold cows that I just now made are what rescued you from Egypt. Seriously. <laughs> God rescued them from Egypt. Generations upon generations before this even happened. Um, they've tried this whole lot of worship thing before. It always, of course, displeases God. They always end up paying the consequences. They turn back to God. Then they end up worshiping false gods again. I just can't even claim to really understand what's going on. But it's their history. This is It happened. This is the way it went down um, with the Israelites again, this time under the uh, rule of Jeroboam. So, um, he puts one of the calves at an altar in Bethel and the other on an altar in a part of the country called Dan, um, and set the people back to worshiping idols yet again. Um, and so one day, Jeroboam is there at the altar in Bethel himself, worshiping this calf that he himself had made. And um, a prophet comes through and prophesies that a man from David's family named Josiah will burn the priests who are worshiping at that altar and that as proof he is going to have that, that God will cause the altar to break down and the ashes to spill out of it. Him prophesying this angers Jeroboam. These are This is his calf that he had made out of gold and he doesn't want to be told that it's angering God. That angers Jeroboam himself. So he goes to grab that prophet out of anger. And when he reaches out to grab the man, his hand shrivels up instantly. Just like withers away. Maybe not away, but withers into just a useless little nub of a hand. And the altar breaks apart and the ashes spill out. So there God has given the proof that he had said he was going to give. And so, at this point, if I was the priests who had been worshiping there at that golden calf, I would be pretty concerned because 
the altar breaking down and its ashes spilling out was going to be proof that a man named Josiah from the family of David was going to burn the priests who were worshiping at that altar of that golden calf. So the altar has broken down, has spilled its ashes, just like this prophet had said would happen. So yeah, if I was the priest that were worshiping there, I'd be getting pretty concerned right now. If I was Jeroboam, I'd probably be pretty concerned too because God is obviously not happy. He just withered his hand instantaneously when he went to grab this prophet. So yeah, once again, God is not happy. So we'll see where that takes them in the next story.